Shalom. We are continuing now with a look at Psalm number 20. For the leader, a Psalm of David. May the Lord answer you in time of trouble. The name of Jacob's God keep you safe. May he send your, you help from the sanctuary and sustain you from Zion. May he receive the tokens of all your meal offerings and approve your burnt offerings, Selah. May he grant you your desire and fulfill your every plan. May we shout for joy in your victory, arrayed by standards in the name of our God. May the Lord fulfill your every wish. Now I know that the Lord will give victory to his anointed, will answer him from his heavenly sanctuary with the mighty victories of his right arm. They call on chariots, they call on horses, but we call on the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and lie fallen, but we rally and gather strength. O Lord, grant victory. May the king answer us when we call. One of the things that is notable about this psalm, Psalm 20, is the fact that it is recited in the morning uh, shacharit, or the morning service, virtually every day, with the exception of uh, Shabbat and holidays, or eve of holidays. So it's a regular psalm in the form of a prayer that we include in our daily service near the end of the service. The reason why it is omitted on festive days is because of its somber nature, at least at the beginning, where the psalmist asks God uh, for an answer in time of distress and trouble. It was felt by the uh, compilers and editors of the prayer books that to include this reference to times of trouble and distress on festive and joyful days would not really be fitting. One of the things that interests me about this psalm is the way the psalmist starts off by addressing a congregation. I can imagine a kind of a, a priest, priestly or rabbinic benediction going on here, uh, where the people are sitting in the congregation and the officiant or the, the, the rabbi, the Kohen priest, the levy, standing up there on the pulpit or uh, near the altar in some kind of elevated uh, place with some kind of elevated stature, looking down upon the congregation and addressing the congregation with the hope and prayer that all of their needs be answered, especially during times of trouble. So there's this a sense of, of address and relation and communication with a group of worshipers at the beginning. And then the psalmist switches focus to an affirmation within, within himself, affirming the idea that God will give victory to his anointed, affirming the notion that the enemies will stumble and fall while the Lord's anointed will rally and gather strength. And then the psalm concludes with a reference to and a focus on and an address to, to God in God's self. O Lord, grant victory. May the king answer us when we call. From a communication point of view, the psalmist is talking to and relating to a congregation on the one hand, and then musing within himself about God's power and the fact that God is on the side of, of God's anointed, and then ending with a direct communication to God, asking God for salvation and for an answer to the psalmist's prayer and the supplications of the people. The communication aspect of this psalm is powerful to me because when we are in a time of trouble and distress, there can be a tendency to 
go to extremes in the way we communicate. We can either isolate within ourselves and shut off and cut off the rest of the world. This can be a symptom and a form of depression where we pull in within ourselves and show no interest or desire to engage with, with other people. And that can even include our closest family and friends. In this psalm, out of distress and out of trouble and travail, the communication outreach is to the congregation, to the worshipers, to people on the outside. This is a symptom of a healthy mind and a healthy spirit. This is a, uh, an indication that the person who is aware of being in trouble and in distress in a time of travail, instead of pulling strictly within, will reach out to others and connect with the outside world in the way of praying for their wishes and their needs to be heard and to be met by God. Certainly, when the psalmist says, may God grant your every desire and fulfill your every wish, the psalmists or whoever is blessing the congregation, the rabbi, the priest, whoever, knows full well that it is impossible to imagine that all of our desires and wishes and hopes will be fulfilled by God. It is unrealistic and maybe even dangerous. But we also know that in asking for uh, the fulfillment of every wish and desire, anything we get, any wish or desire that is, that is met, is a cause for gratitude and thanks. Basically, we come at this with the perspective of we will take whatever we can get, especially during a time of, of trouble and sorrow and difficulty. Any relief, any blessing, any goodness that can come our way should and ought to be uh, a source of gratitude uh, for us. And the source of, of those blessings acknowledged at the end of the psalm is God. The psalmist communicates with God in a way of expressing appreciation and a supplication at the end, asking God to answer our prayers and asking God to grant victory. So instead of isolating within during a time of difficulty, we strive to communicate with others around us. We communicate with our innermost selves at the same time and strive to be aware of our own feelings within, our own needs and our own desires. And we also try to communicate with God through prayer, through meditation, through the ways that we think about our spiritual lives and our connection, not only with human beings, but with the source of all being, with, with the Holy One. Communication during times of trouble is key. It is so important. Rather than pulling strictly within ourselves and shutting ourselves off from the outside world and even from those closest to us, especially during times of trouble, like in today's world, it is crucial that we reach out and connect with those around us and ultimately try to connect with God as the source of all good, the source of love, the source of all being our creator and our redeemer. Thank you.